Shut up and sit down. Hey, and welcome to the Freya MMA podcast. Join us in our discussion about the beautiful sport, which is mixed martial arts. Hey guys, this is a bit of a shorter interview here. Um, a bit of tying loose ends. Recently, we've done an interview with, or a podcast, excuse me, with the promoters from Ragnarok uh, BKF, so Ragnarok Bare Knuckle Federation. Um, and they have been in the news a lot recently because their event didn't take place. Uh, we have Andrew Bakewell, who was the prom- co-promoter at this time, or the matchmaker, uh, and now is a ex-promoter, shall I say. He's just here to explain his side of things and to talk a bit about what happened. Uh, so if you have been following the story from the media or from the Facebook groups, then uh, maybe this will shine a light on at least his side of the story. So, um, here's the interview. Uh, hello, I'm here with uh, Andrew Bakewell, who was the former co-promoter of Ragnarok uh, Bare Knuckle Fighting, which is in a lot of news recently. Um, I, I guess uh, I can put it over to you and so tell us exactly what happened there. Um, yeah, I ended up walking away from the company on the, um, on the Friday, but I mean... I was, I was playing with the idea of walking away from the moment I got there, to be honest with you. A lot of, um, just a lot, I do a lot of lies to, to told. There was, um, it just, he just withheld a lot of truth so bad. It, when I, it was hard to see when I was over in England until I got over to Norway and I seen the mess it was kind of in. Um, I mean, it took me a few days to sort of sit down and go through a full budget of like, what money was coming in, what money was going out. And as soon as I finally it took me like a couple of hours to get and sit down and actually do it, um, just massive um, red flags. It was like 25,000 pounds in the red from oh, the wow. calculations I come up with. Um, he just lied about sponsor money. Um, that was, he was said he had 14,000 pounds of sponsor money coming in, which would have paid for all the flights, accommodation, everything, everything that wasn't um, organized when I got over there. Mm-hmm. Um, then it, it just got out of hand from there, really. I mean, yeah. So, so let's go back to 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 the beginning. Then, uh, obviously, this is um, was a partnership with you and Stanley von Hafstetter. Um, so, what was kind of said to you while you was in the UK? Because this isn't your first bare knuckle show. No, I've done, I've done nine previous shows. Yeah over with BFBA in England. Um, well, my role in the company was to put all the fights together. Obviously, we, we had some difficulties anyway with um, obviously the COVID restrictions. The England team was supposed to go over. Um, that obviously fell through because we couldn't leave it any longer to wait for Norway to lift the restrictions on the English fighters coming over, which were a problem because the English um, government didn't have an agreement in place with the Norwegian government um, about allowing the COVID passport, meaning... All the fighters would have had to be isolated for seven days, I think it was, mm-hmm. um, which is obviously a massive cost. So we tried a few weeks before the actual event, we tried rejigging things and doing the Battle of the Vikings, using all the Scandinavian guys. Then I brought in as many European lads as we could, um, all double vaccinated guys. Um, <laughs> And on that, that that was that was my role in the company to, to arrange all that side of things and um, uh, put us in contact with um, teams from other countries as well uh, for the long term plan of putting shows on against other countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, the legal side of things, um, all the the flights, accommodation, everything um, it was supposed to be getting tackled over in Norway, which obviously it's kind of difficult to do that from over in England. Yeah, um, for another country. Yeah, because. Uh... Hearing about a bare knuckle event coming from Norway, there was a lot of alarm bells and a lot of fans did had did have the speculations. I understand from from your point, you it was a thing of you know just speculations because of what happens with the. Yeah, I mean, I, I could only go off what was being told on his end, and he he claimed to have some lawyer that was 
working with all the legal side of things over there. But it was kind of everything was always getting delayed. You know, always promising to send stuff off and he wasn't. And I'd ask a few weeks later if this sort of the applications and stuff had been put in. It turns out on the actual day of the show, um, the streaming girls who were working with us trying to sort of salvage the event, they, they, it come to light with them. That, um, no application had been put in for the event at all. So regardless of what sort of hoops we jumped through, mm-hmm. the police would have still turned up on the day and just shut the whole thing down. So... Um... As you said, you flew over to Norway. Mm. Uh, when did the alarm bells start coming in for you? Um, after a few days, mate, because I got there and I was like, I was aware the hand wrapping stuff, which I sent him over. I sent him all the de- my hand wrapping team in England provided all the details of the stuff we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, I spoke with a couple of guys through um, Hans Pettersen about coming wrapping the hands. I mean, in my eyes, all that was sorted. I sent him over the details. He just needed to order the stuff. Um, so that hadn't been sorted. The accommodation flights hadn't been sorted. I mean, we're talking like this was Friday, a week and a day away from the show, which well, at first wasn't a massive because he was claiming to have all this sponsor money. Um, and I just thought it'll happen in the next couple of days. And as a few days went on, I was like, why, why is this still not being sorted? And he starts claiming, doesn't he? Uh, he's just trying to get really some funds and stuff like that. Then this is when I sat down and Made him go through the budget with me, which it turned out was like twenty five thousand pounds shy of even breaking even. And he had these mad figures in his head that he was going to do all this money through streaming. And um, he said he had forty thousand pounds of sponsor money. Then he just at one point just said, "Oh, just forget about the sponsor money. If it if it turns up, it turns up." And we were like, "Wow, well, we can't just fucking forget about forty thousand pounds, mate." Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what he was planning. How he was planning to kind of cover up these massive flaws in the show I think he was planning on in wishful thinking of he was going to do well on the streaming side of things but again it just I just never would budget a show on the back of that because you can never guarantee anything with streaming side of things it, it could have fallen on its ass it could have done alright it could have not done alright but what, what happens if it doesn't do alright <laughs> you've got a lot of a lot of bills landing on your head yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not really too much into the political sides of things, but I'm sure that there's a lot of time and other people's time and other people's money put into the show as well. Yeah, mate, I mean, yeah, as well. Um Yeah, mate, I mean, regardless of what we're saying about the situation at the time, just like <laughs> massive <laughs> issues with the finances. I was like, we need to just quit whilst we're ahead with it, you know? And he was just determined to get something over the line to claw back some money through the ticket sales. But I mean, he wouldn't give me access to the ticket sales to see where we were up to. I mean, he made a big, big song and dance about not letting anybody see it. And it turns out later down the line, he was photoshopping. He'd screenshot and send it, uh, the, uh, basically how the, the, the ticket sales were going to myself and the two streaming women that were working with called Kaya and Eva. Mm-hmm. And it turns out we were just photoshopping because they were sending me figures like 500 tickets are gone. Um, then it turns out it only sold 200 tickets like on the day. So it was doing the same thing with bank statements with guys that were sending money over to that were claiming they're paying businesses and fighters um, paying them money. And they were saying money's not landed, but then he was trying to send screenshots of... Like um, photoshops, just bank statements, whatever, whatever was going on, it was um, it was just trying to pull the wool over a lot of people's eyes. And it was I don't, I don't know how he thought it was. I don't think he's done anything. I think he just dig, dug himself a hole and just carried on digging instead of just kind of holding his hands up and accepting. Mm-hmm. Just it was going horribly wrong. Yeah, no, I mean for for us on the fan side as well. I know one of your fighters, uh, Sismon, uh Simon. Mm. I'm not really too sure of it. He's got a quite difficult name. Uh, Simon uh, Sawinski, I think it's called. Correct, correct. <laughs> yes. Uh, first of all, he was very vocal in saying that he doesn't want anything to do with the promotion. But then... Yeah, he was, mate. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Simon throughout this, and he was he was just a straight old guy. Simon, he's, I've, I've mm-hmm. got a lot of time for the guys. Um, he wanted to, obviously when things started flagging up because I. When I, it was clear to me that there was going to be a struggle in paying the fighters, I, I spoke to some of the fighters and said, look, you need to make sure the money, it's, you need to get payment up front before um, you don't walk away from the show without getting paid because I wasn't confident anybody was getting paid because it was relying on a lot of money coming in after the show. Mm-hmm. It's like the, the ticket money, the, the letter, they wouldn't have paid for like two days. The streaming side of it, even if it did well, it'd 
it's been a few days before I came in, so I don't understand. But without any sponsor money, mate. And at one point he was telling me we had like hundred and fifty thousand pounds of sponsor money, like sat that coming in. Then one of the main sponsors got held back because it was um cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. That got held back, so then it went from eighty thousand. That was like eighty thousand of sponsor money, but then it went from that to zero. And he was like, he had no sponsor money then. All of a sudden, he had fourteen thousand pounds of sponsor money then. But again, it went to zero because it was just, it was just inventing stuff in his head. He didn't get any sponsor money. In. Yeah, because it was a bit crazy. It was on the day that uh, this fighter started saying that he doesn't want anything to do with it, and then uh, Shannon Rich was also saying that the <laughs> event was cancelled because of COVID. Uh, so yeah, he was very confused was, here. Yeah, it was. Um, I think. Um, well, that was just an official statement. Obviously, I, I'd left by then. I, I decided to leave on the Friday morning because I just, I just didn't agree with everything that was going on. The, the event should have been pulled. It should have just been straight with everybody about the situation. Um, I, I tried to patch things up and just make sure the fighters' wages were going to be secured as best I could. But um, it's just a lot of stuff out of my hands, mate. And I was just mm. getting dragged into the middle of something really messy. Um, like I said, all the like pretty much all the fighters have contacted me since. Um, they, they know my role in it. They, they, they know I just tried my best. I, I didn't know a lot about the stuff that was going on anymore than they did. Um, again, like Hans Peterson, I've been on the phone to him today about he's coming over to England to fight on one of my shows. Um, Shannon, I've stayed in contact with. I mean, even um, Michelle Lopez went for a couple of beers with him one night when I was over there. He's he, he, he knows uh, I was kind of straight with everybody about the situation the show was in but he was just trying to cover up the um, the holes in the situation which just kept getting worse and worse as days went on because he didn't have time to fix anything that was like already there that so was a problem because every morning we'd get up and there was just more big issues to tackle mm-hmm. um, I believe he couldn't even get the ring in the venue Um the second ring he got in, couldn't secure it to the floor because they said it needed bolting to the floor. Then uh, the venue said they couldn't fix anything to the floor, which I mean, it's pretty basic stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so you said that you left on the Friday morning. If I could ask, what was the straw that broke the camel's back, should I say? Um, I'm trying to point the finger at me, like it was my fault, so some of this stuff wasn't getting done. Um, <laughs> Again, like I said, all of this side of thing, all the accommodation, flights, everything that was all supposed to be sorted when I landed over there. Um, the stream, uh, the sponsor money was that obviously didn't exist. We we're supposed to cover all that. He was running around trying to borrow money wherever he could um, to pay for these things, and it was just more fires were turning up. I mean, I waited until I went and seen friend of Michael Carlos, um, one of the BKB Italy guys. Mm-hmm. I went and seen him in person, just kind of explained. I had to get off. I just couldn't be around the situation anymore. It was just, it was just like I said, if I'd have known all this, all these things were going to be a, uh, an issue, I wouldn't have even left England. I, I was told all these things were put in place. All the legal side of things were sorted. All the basic stuff was, none of it was sorted. So like you said, you have reached out to some of these fighters about getting onto some of your shows as well. Well, they've reached out to me, mate. They've reached mm-hmm. out to them. Um, I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to bring them into the shows. Um, yeah, the, 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 honestly, I mean, the, the statements uh, he made about him trying to blackmail him were just complete bollocks as well. They just wanted pain for, obviously, <laughs> the, all these fighters. They, they, they train. They, they put their heart and soul into training for eight to twelve weeks. Um, leading up to it, a lot of them stop work, sacrifice a lot of family time. They um, well, the, the, the fighters, you know, the, the, the sacrifices to make, but they expect mm-hmm. to be paid for it, um, or at least things to be in place where the show can actually happen. Because I don't think it turns out the doctors weren't even put in place. There was no referee. Like I said, it's like <laughs> you can't make the stuff up. That was that's a missing from the show. Yeah, I guess uh, it's difficult in a place like Norway, especially that doesn't really have any kind of combat sports federation that kind yeah, of well, it was, mate. um oh, i'll get in the ring i could understand the ring being an issue to get all the but he, he promised me there was a ring sorted um i had no reason to believe anything any anything other than that um i mean 
the hand wrappers were supposed to be some Thai boxing guys coming over doing the hand wrapping because obviously all these guys were supposed to come from England originally. Mm -hmm. So when we couldn't get the English guys over, um, we obviously had to try and get Stan to sort things out from nowhere. Um, obviously, my contacts in Norway are pretty limited. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, they, he told me he had these guys coming in from, but again, there was no like no substance behind what we were saying. <laughs> Would you say that this would also be a massive pushback for the combat sports scene in, in Norway? I think it's um, a bit of a black mark on bare knuckle boxing all over um, the world, really. I mean, it's, it's a sport just trying to take off, and the last thing you need is um, things like this popping up with promotions. Um, I'm just embarrassed to be part of it, to be honest with you. It was um, one of the worst organised events I've ever been a part of in my life. I've never, ever put a show on. Um, and fighters walked away with no money ever in my life. I'm a fighter myself. I just, I just don't think it's acceptable behaviour. And if you've not got the funds to cover the event, and pay the fighters, it should not be happening. Mm. Yeah, I, I really do hope that uh, not only fighters uh, get paid at least their show money, but also the fans that have bought tickets and everything like that do get their reimbursement somehow. Yeah, yeah as well. I mean, to be fair, the fans who bought tickets was all through online ticket sales. Um, that, that that will just get reimbursed automatically for some blood to believe. But again, I don't. I've never had any access to the bill or ticket sales myself. That's why I just got screenshots of where it was up to. But again, I seen some states Stanley put out saying that I'd run off with money and stuff like that. But again, what what there was no money to run off with. There was there was no sponsor money. There was no streaming money. There was no ticket money. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just they explained to me what money had been. Um, it just bollocks, you know what I mean? It's, you know what? Everybody can make mistakes in life, and you just need to hold your hand up sometimes and say, Look, I fucked up, you know. People can forgive that, people won't forgive. Just you're talking shit. Yeah, definitely. And uh, us being a platform, we have asked Stanley to come on and give his views, but he, he has not yet uh, said anything back yet. So, uh, I mean, if, if he's going to come on, Online has starts to tell some truths about what happened. They're great. I, I've, there's nothing personal between me and them. It's just I couldn't be a part of just the mess that was created over there, which was 95% on his end. You know, there's limited stuff I could even help with over there. It was like just watching it just explode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess it's a great learning curve for, for you also as a promoter in the UK. <laughs> how not to do things shall i say no oh, mate it's just i just wouldn't ever fucking sort of loan out my reputation again you know it's just all the all these fighters came on board just on the back of the all new me and they trusted me from the work i do in my company in england mm -hmm. like i said i mean we've never had a massive budget over my company the bfba company but we've always found a way to bring in the right people the right money um and put on a fucking good show and always cover our costs and make sure everyone's paid so do you Which, have anything um, in the in the lineup now in the UK? I've got a show, I've got a show this Saturday coming up in England, um, which will be the biggest show we've ever done. But again, I know that, that show is covered. You know, I'm very thorough with the budget side of things. I just nothing gets left to chance. Well, I guess this is a a good time. If any, there's an open space for a lot of people that want to see some bare knuckle boxing. So where can we find it? Uh, on the BKF, BKTV app this Saturday, um, BFBA presents Tour de Line Fight Series. We're working with um, David Feldman and um, the BK FC company in America, streaming out their uh, Tour de Line Fight Series events. So, again, I just I, there's not a lot I can say other than I, ju I just want an opportunity to show what I can actually do as a promoter on Saturday. When my, the, the company I run over here, and my team have that full confidence to know. No hidden, there's no secrets between any of us. We're all, we're all real honest with each other. Everything I've, I've full confidence in the team I've got over here. Um, I just like I said, I just I can talk all the shit in the world, but uh, all I can do realistically is show people what the shows are that I put on. Mm -hmm. I really like, yep. Well, you got a you got a great plug in there. I hope uh, everyone that has been missing it can watch your show now. Um, thank you for coming on and being so honest as well. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on to kind of clear things up. Yep, no problem, man. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself, man. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.